Yeah, I think a lot of their decisions are off their hands. Um, I think they're stuck, um, very similar to RBA. Uh, I think we all know what RBA should be doing. Um, we all know what BOJ eventually will have to do. Um, we've seen it time and time again. It's almost like the, the old classic movie played against Sam. Um, you, you see the thematic, people talk about reform, talk about taxes, all of these things are good to talk about, but when you have to execute them, they don't. They just go back to more money printing. Um, very, I mean, you're seeing that even in the US, um, there was a lot of tax reform strategies put in, so supposed to pay for all the fiscal stimulus. Guess what happened? The stimulus happened, but none of the taxes came through and it's still in play. So these are the problems on a global scale. And it's the political cycle. We've got a midterm election in the US later this year. We've got a federal election in Australia. Um, Japan's had political turmoil where leaders have been switched around. So it's really hard for political um, you know, capital to invest in trying to push it through reform and actually to, uh, drive structural growth. So all we're doing is we talk about reform, but we don't do reform. So we're kind of stuck. We're just going to be doing money printing and then we stop money printing and the economy then naturally grinds to lower growth and then we do more money printing. So uh, I think Japan is stuck in that and BOJ, I think it's following very similar to what RBA is going to do. They're going to talk about it, but they just won't do anything about it. Yeah, and you you have used the appropriate term over here, Mason, in saying that they're just stuck. It's, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place. I just want to flag for our viewers what's happening with the yen because it's been a bit of a spike there uh, for the Japanese currency uh, that is, no, can we bring up the integrate the graph? I think we saw a little bit of a move up. There you go, that little spike uh, for the dollar versus the yen. So the yen weakening a bit. Um, do you think that that that, that is uh, the way forward? The yen losing its carry trade status. I don't know how much can you weigh in on that, Nathan. But but really, at a time when the world is looking at the dollar gaining ground, what happens to these carry currencies? Yeah, look, I think we're in a we're in a currency war uh, to control inflation. Um, China started that early. They they control their domestic inflation by exporting inflation through keeping a quite, quite a strong one. And the US Fed has now, because of the midterm election political pressure, has resorted to go triple threat uh, tapering. They're going to do faster QE cuts, uh, putting up rates and balance sheet reduction. So they're trying to pump up US dollar. Now that's, that's the gorilla in the game. If they move, everyone else moves the other way. So I think a lot of people assume that the US dollar would weaken and every other currency will uh, move up. Um, I think the risk is that everyone, as usual with currency, when everyone thinks one way, it's the other way that's the risk. So if the US dollar keeps climbing, I think the yen and Aussie dollar and et cetera will keep sliding and that'll create, and this is the problem, if they keep sliding, they will create inflation for consumers, especially in Australia. We uh, import all our consumer goods. So if you've got a weaker Aussie dollar, we're going to see inflation. 